What's up everybody, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey and uh, in a previous video I showed you the Box Plus One defensive zone coverage setup and at that point I mentioned that it was a really good introductory defensive zone coverage system um, for maybe for youngsters or players that maybe hadn't had a whole lot of experience with positional play and defensive zone coverage setups in the past. I also mentioned that it was a really good uh, initial system that could be progressed and converted into more complex versions of defensive zone coverage systems. So that's what I wanted to show you guys today is how you're going to, as your players progress through and get used to playing this type of hockey, how you're going to convert this into more complex defensive zone coverage systems. And what I wanted to show you guys today is the, I call it the sagging zone. And so this is sagging zone coverage. We'll pull up the rink here and you'll see exactly um, why we call it a sagging zone. But um, what I've got here is, uh, as you'll remember from the previous video, is our box plus one setup. So basically in the box plus one, you've got one player on the puck and four guys in front of the net. Um, it's, a, it's a good, safe defense zone, cover, defense zone coverage setup um, because you're always covering the front of the net, but it's not very aggressive, so causing a, causing a turnover can be difficult in this, uh, in this particular setup. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna make a few slight, slight adjustments and uh, it'll make a, a really big difference on um, how we're going to uh, cause turnovers in the defensive zone. So, pucks in the corner. Um, we're just gonna assume basic similar setup as we had before with the offensive team. Pucks in the corner, we're gonna send our right defenseman out there and he's gonna pressure the puck carrier. Now I mentioned before, I'll mention it again, depending on whether or not that puck carrier has good control of the puck, he'll either be in force mode, which is very aggressive, go and take the puck, go make the hit mode, or uh, a contain mode. And contain means basically he's just going to close the gap and then play the play the puck carrier because the puck carrier still has good good control of the puck. So uh, right defenseman goes out and challenges. Centerman's going to stay on the strong side post, anticipating a, a possible turnover. And uh, if there is a turnover, he's going to be the one that swings in and picks it up. Uh, left defenseman's still on the, the weak side post, and he's got his head on a swivel, making sure that nobody's hanging out on the back door. Um, and then what we're going to do here is instead of having our wingers uh, set up on the high posts, what we're going to do is we're going to have our right winger slide out and he's going to play basically basically around the top of the circles. So what he's looking to do, he doesn't want to fully commit and cover this defenseman because um, that leaves a lot of open space in behind him. So he's actually going to be watching both of these guys at the same time and anticipating a possible uh, pass up to the defenseman. As soon as he sees a possible pass up to the defenseman, that's when he starts moving so that he arrives at the player at the same time as the puck uh, so that he can make that hit. And then what we're going to do is instead of having our left winger just hang out here, um, we're going to send him right here down in the, the low slot and he's going to be called our sag man. Um, and I know a lot of people get a chuckle out of that. That's just what we call him uh, because he's sagging low. Um, some teams will have him play up high and I think that that's a fairly low percentage pass and it's something that any player should be able to read anyways. Um, so if he sees the pass coming through, then he should be able to read it and get out there. So I think that uh, it's more important to stack the front of our net than to stack the points. So that's where we're going to have the weak side winger. So weak side winger is a sag man. And this is it. Like I said before, it's not a whole big difference or big change in positioning. It's basically just changing what the wingers do. Um, but just these little tweaks can make for a much more aggressive um, defensive zone coverage and uh, force more turnovers. So that's the sagging zone. Let's talk about how the shifts happen if the puck moves. Um, <clears throat> so let's say the puck goes from corner to corner. Then the shift is basic, uh, left defenseman comes down to play the puck, centerman slides across, and right defenseman comes to the to weak side post. Uh, and then the wingers are easy, left winger just comes out, and right winger sags. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. Now, where you will run into problems, and you probably need to reinforce this heavily with your team, is the sag man, as the puck shifts from corner to corner, the weak side winger that was the strong side winger he becomes the weak side winger. He needs to be able to sag, and sometimes he forgets to do that. So he's got to sag. He's got to get very low. So it's a low slot sag, and uh, and then he'll be just fine there. Um, if puck the puck comes up to the point, like I said before, I'm not going to draw all the other teams' shift, shifting movements as well. But uh, you can just imagine. Obviously, if they're passing around, there's going to be a man there. Puck comes to the point, then that's when this guy comes out, challenges. Um, and then that's when the right winger will begin to slide out, anticipating a possible D to D pass. Um, if it's at the point, then the centerman will also slide up, and the left defenseman will retreat back. 
Um, but not all the way back to the front of the net just because this uh, it is possible that the puck will come back to the corner. So he wants to come out. It's kind of how the how the winger plays it. He plays a little bit of possum. So until he sees that the puck is actually going to be passed, um, he's just kind of hanging out midway so that he can get back if he needs to or he can cover the front of the net if the shot comes through. But um, with the sagging zone, um, it's still it's a lot more aggressive, but it's still rel relatively safe because if your players shift properly, then you should always have at least three guys in front of the net. And uh, that's the sagging zone defensive zone coverage.